So, uh, all right. So we welcome you to another episode of Learning Stories. Learning Stories is a show where we interview a diverse set of learners from the 21st century. In each episode of this show, uh, we have a guest profiled um, who has a unique story to share about how they acquired a set of uh, diverse skills and knowledge in a creative and innovative manner. In the process, we hope to uncover a new definition of learning as narrated, conceptualized, and imagined by our speaker. Um, today's guest, Janak uh, Rathod, is a photojournalist by profession. And uh, he, he was born and brought up in the Middle East in Bahrain, and he finished his schooling there. Um, he went to school to study. Uh, he finished a bachelor of, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to take that back, but Janak studied photography and he did a Bachelor of Fine Arts um, in Pune. And then he also pursued a diploma course in photojournalism from the Udan School of Photography uh, in Mumbai in India. He then interned for the Indian Express and uh, he has maintained a very, very interesting photography Instagram account, which is his official work account but he also has a lot of articles published where he is doing and taking the photos uh, for the uh, articles being published. And uh, while preparing for this interview, I remember Janak telling me a little thing that he enjoys making observations about the world uh, that eventually become photographs or notes in his journal. And uh, that is something that I want to get into in this conversation, Janak, just your thinking behind a photo and and how did you become the uh, photojournalist and photographer that you are today? But just to get started, Janak, you know, uh, to give our viewers, I mean, I did tell them a little bit about where you were born and brought up, but what yeah. was Janak like as a child? And, you know, what were some of the things you were interested in and how did that become photography? All right. Uh, as a child, I think uh, academically, I was... Uh, all the way in until like like sixth to seventh grade i was like doing all great and uh, i knew nothing but getting the rank which is not a double digit like i used to be in the top five or the top six and i should stay there and the teachers were happy so and so but uh, ambition wise i was never sure like it was always uh, changing like if i found the diagram of a heart very interesting i thought i would be a doctor someday I had, uh, I remember my childhood dreams, which are more interesting, perhaps, uh, and I can recall them like very precisely. Uh, so it's a funny uh, intake, or uh, like, uh, you know, when I think about it. Uh, so as a child, when I was in the school bus, as a little kid, uh, I, I wanted to be a bus driver. Like that was, like that, that made me feel happy because I saw my bus driver uh, listening to all his favorite songs. Uh, and he used to play it like pretty loud and, you know, take all us, all of us and uh, used to uh, have his meals when we were like coming back, uh, you know, to the bus to go back home. So I just thought to myself that this is pretty interesting and maybe I'd be a bus driver someday. Uh, I looked at uh, a mechanic in a garage one day when I was playing around uh, the neighborhood and I saw this guy drives good sports car, brings it to the garage and like, you know, works on it and he gets to ride it around also. So I thought that maybe I'd be that someday. And uh, so and so it kept going on to me wanting to become a, a teacher uh, at some point when I saw my mother, you know, giving tuition classes at home. But I thought that that was very noble and that was very nice to have, you know, people around and, you know, joke around and uh, teach. And I also felt like... Uh, becoming an accountant but as i said like things kept going on and on uh, from doctor to becoming uh, whatever people like filled ideas into my little world I, I, as i kept looking at people like i kept changing the idea of what i wanted to be at some point i was very uh, very very uh, keen on becoming a doctor like i remember coming back to india for like summer vacations and i used to like proudly say to everybody you know i'm going to become a doctor someday and uh, they used to ask me like what doctor i used to say i want to be a brain surgeon mm -hmm. and uh, and and funnily i think by the eighth or the ninth grade uh, I, I think i broke that bubble of uh, uh, myself which let me have more than one or two friends like you know i i started having more friends so until the sixth or the seventh grade i never had so many friends i was by myself, 
uh, you know, uh, I used to never speak so much to so many people. I, I was not so social. I used to look at people from far. Mm. I used to adore friendships from far. And I used to never be able to, you know, uh, I didn't want to do something extra to be a part of them. I just thought if it happens someday, it happens. And so it did in the eighth or the ninth grade. Uh, and I'm thankful. Like, this is not the kind of story where I uh, look, uh, you know, uh, Sadly, on the past where I started making friends, but it was the most interesting phase of my life where I realized how much fun it could, fun it can be uh, from you know um, somebody actually like trying to tell me that you can do something so much more apart from what you do uh, like sports. Uh, but what I precisely remember is a, uh, a group of friends who you know encouraged me to be a part of their uh, team to um, play this role of uh, Puck and it was a it was a character in Shakespeare's uh, one of the Shakespeare's plays and we had to do it for the talent fest in Asian school mm -hmm. and uh, and that was very interesting for me because I, I knew I did a little bit here and there when I was in my own family circle and in my uh, uh, you know in other environments but the school but suddenly when it was school and you know I had to be a character and I had to perform in front of uh, so many children and so many friends uh, Things were interesting. I was all into it. And I realized my stage fear started, uh, you know, uh, it, it maybe never existed, but like in front of the school, in front of the environment uh, where I was always just studying, I started becoming a little bit, like a bit more confident. And I realized uh, hanging out is fun. I realized, uh, you know, uh, going to a pizza place with friends is more fun sometimes. And, you know, uh, I learned ice skating with my friends. So these things started taking on my life so much more than my uh, books at some point that I um, I chose to find uh, what do you say? Uh, it it was it was it was a new spark in my life which I had to chase. Like I had to you know be all in. So it was all in for friendship then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess uh, I was not doing bad academically, I would say, because I, I remember like it was just a couple of grades, like I, I fell down a couple of ranks uh, lower, but the teachers really felt very disappointed, uh, you know, in parent teacher meetings or in exam wise when I used to get my ranks. And uh, I felt I felt bad. Maybe my rank was not as much uh, of a problem, but just people, uh, the ones who always cheered me, they somehow just felt that I could do so much better and I was getting distracted by my friends and uh, I think uh, maybe because uh, such friendship, such tight friendship came to me after such a long time, I was uh, taken away. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I remember like uh, at this point where I was uh, left, you know, uh, completely isolated from academics in a certain way, like my interests had fall fallen down and uh, I was getting restless and my friends, uh, they knew what they were doing like they were all uh, the minds were set to do like they knew what they were uh, uh, going in for so they did not uh, 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 face as much as i did probably i would say maybe maybe their stories are different but it looked like i was the one who was the most troubled out of the so many uh, uh, so i had to channel my anger my sadness and uh, my wanting to do something at in in some way or the other and uh, that is when i think uh, my pictures and my wanting to photograph it. I was never a person who touched a camera, by the way. Like until uh, the largest part of my childhood was just me not wanting to hold a camera when we were on vacations. It was always my father who used to, you know, uh, take a camera, photograph a lot. And uh, he was a person of, uh, you know, the, with the interest in cinema and theater and filming. And I think maybe knowingly and knowingly, uh, his passion, uh, has been Transfers like, on TV. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 like we speak about it now. Like he always used to tell me now, uh, like now that we speak, we, he tells me about how in his days, he always wanted to do something in the field of, uh, you know, visual arts or something like that, but it was not an option because he had to take care of a family and, you know, uh, had to go on with his life. But, uh, I think, Picking up a camera at that age, uh, it was not it was not the camera that uh, I probably have right now. Or the people who always look up to, have, you know, when they say that, you know, he, uh, he's a guy with a DSLR or he, 
he's the guy with you know the fancy cameras and of course he gets the better pictures out of life uh, i i started with a mobile phone camera uh, uh, which was i still remember 5130 you don't know kya express music uh, <laughs> and it was two megapixels and i did the best what i could out of it and it was not best in the sense of uh, no photographic value of like now that i know about what photographs uh, can be and can mean but i think that was the part where things were more fun like now i know what things are mm. back then i did not know what my pictures could do so sure. i used to just make pictures of my friends and uh, used to try the different uh, effects that came along with the camera i used to take pictures of uh, if i if i spot a jellyfish in the ocean with my 2 megapixel i was going all in zooming it and trying to photograph if i can and those pictures i think have remained to be much 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 more special today than the ones that i have saved up to you know uh, for showing in it like for you know for showing it in two offices and for portfolios and stuff like that mm. i think these pictures which had no purpose at some point of my life i think they are, they they make me want to continue this uh, uh thing that i am on right now and uh, that's about that like i think everything started on from that part of my life where i had to make pictures and uh, and then there was i think no looking back because i i was all into it that's that that's so fascinating janak you know because i i'm hearing you and there are so many things that come out to me but i think the main thing was and something i've known about you for a very long time is you're very passionately curious you know when you find something you try breaking the parts dismantling it and figuring out what it is and when you told yeah, me yeah. about all the different professions you know you yeah. were looking at as a young person i assume that yeah. even at that time you were trying to break it down to its component parts and try and yes. you know mix those yeah. parts yourself but the other thing i heard when you were speaking was observing you know people around you very closely and that also translated into observing your father and his passion and and that is something yeah. you know sometimes we pick up interests that our parents have and and take it in another yeah. direction or interests that our yeah. friends have and take it in another so i think these two or three things that you mentioned were so you know interesting but like the final thing i thought i you know maybe just review is the thing that you mentioned about just using your phone you know a yes. lot of a lot of young people think that to be competent or proficient you need the most expensive tools but you started yeah. off with your phone device and you were using that in the best way possible right. and i right. think these are some things that you know we can actually learn from your experience but right. janak something you did that you know really uh, is interesting for me is at a very young age you know you decided to pursue a particular path and it's not very easy for people to figure that out at such a young age right because yeah. i assume when you were taking all these photos you were understanding how to see you know how to yeah. see it and everyone has a camera but i think your skill is that you're able to see things that maybe other people are not able to see in a particular situation so why why did you decide to move to um india and maybe study photography not only in a formal right. sense but i know you know in yeah. your free time you're also seeing photos seeing other accounts yeah. which i think is yeah. part of your education as much as anything yeah. else so, yes, yes. so t- tell me something mm-hmm. about the transition to uh, india and how you developed your skill like from right. a passion to an actual skill that became a profession in right. that period right. so i think uh, so what ends at uh, me starting to photograph uh, with a mobile phone was was not so much out of passion because i had no idea of what photographers are i had no idea of uh, how costly uh, the cameras that at the end of the day can be and for me it was the pure joy i think that was uh, so the 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 part where i start photographing with a mobile phone is just the very beginning so i think the the phase is much longer where i came to india so the phase of me starting out with a mobile phone camera and uh, ending up uh just doing it for pure joy uh and i think what uh, was interesting was uh i made a like i i i started using facebook as a tool at some point and i remember making this two albums called uh photography my passion there was a uh, title one and then there was photography my passion two because the first album like it like i couldn't upload more pictures in that one album 
and they had like I had to do another. So I realized that if I if I made so many pictures that you know it exceeded a limit, like my my pictures could not anymore uh, be like it couldn't uh, fit into one album according to Facebook. I had to do another, and uh, it, it was still about it was just about uh, putting it out there and you know friends telling you it's good stuff and uh, so and so. I uh, I was instead of being inspired by the so-called known photographers back then. I did not do my research. I was not, I did not know where I'll end because I knew that I had eighth, ninth, like I knew I had ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth on my way. Like I, I thought this was just fun and I was doing that. Mm -hmm. And more, more, more and so I think I, instead of looking at who the photographers are, I was looking at a few senior friends of mine uh, in school. Uh, the ones who know who they are, they know it. I would not take names because then there'd be so many people left out in the yeah. process. But, uh, uh, they know that uh, at this point, I'm very sure I told it to them more than probably twice uh, in life. You know, whenever I felt uh, I, I dipped into nostalgia, I used to text them and, you know, tell them that this was you at some point who inspired me to do something like this. So I, I saw them putting pictures on Facebook and I did the same. Like I was just following what my seniors did at some point and I found it very cool that, you know, you can look at a place in a certain different way. And you can look at a fountain in a different way. You can look at the road in a different way. Mm. So, and uh, these senior uh, uh, seniors of mine in different schools uh, helped me differently. Uh, so it was Asian school where I started putting pictures in an album because I, you know, I looked up to a senior who never knew that I was influenced by uh, him as such. But uh, I was under the shadow of these so-called uh, cool people in the school, and you know, I was trying to do what they were doing. I always used to look at. Those the people who played sports in a in a very from a very uh, secretive corner of my life, mm. like I never uh, uh, tried asking can I play with you, but I always used to look at them and they you know play and I'm uh, coming I'm going to like you know I'm going to my I'm going to my class and I see my uh, other other friends or the seniors playing and I look at them and I I had a uh, a certain respect to these people who are making uh, look like life is so much fun and. Uh, so I think that is how, like the number one, uh, me putting pictures in an album, in a mm. uh, uh, title, Photography My Passion 1 and Photography My Passion 2, uh, got to me going to Indian school. And at some point I realized that maybe now my, you know, I need a, a, a little bit of a camera. Uh, I need to, you know, uh, maybe use something much more advanced than this. And I, I had to score good grades to get that camera and I did. Uh, and I think at some point, like uh, uh, Indian school was like second school was much more uh, supportive of my journey. Uh, no disregard to the previous school because they made me what I am today. The, the friends around were the ones who, you know, uh, pushed me uh, to a certain extent to what I am today. But uh, they were focused on my academics a lot more than uh, than something that I was trying to tell them out loud that, you know, maybe try, try helping me out here. And Indian school uh, was the place where I think uh, this part of my life was celebrated. Uh, and there again, there was a senior friend of mine, uh, uh, who I saw in the farewells when I was 11. So I had just two years in Indian school and I'm, uh, I'm happy that I was a part of the school. Uh, and in those two years, I had to, uh, you know, I had, I had this burning rage to do something or the other. I had to, because I, I think it, it happens, it so happens to be that the people who come from Asian school or any, I, I think it, it could be from uh, any, uh, for any other people uh, who, you know, have to shift schools. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when you leave one school and you join another, you want to do something you, because you're a new, you're a new person mm -hmm. and uh, you uh, you've suddenly grown up and now you have a little time to, you know, show who you are. And, uh, I saw this, uh, uh, one, one fellow in his uniform trying, uh, photographing the farewell so well. And I was, I, I was like mad happy to see this person because, you know, I did not know him until then. I just went up straight up to him. And this was the time when I broke my barrier of trying to talk to somebody and mm -hmm. trying to know what, what it could be. I went to the person and uh, I asked them, like, how, how, do I, how do I become you? Like, I want to do the same thing that you did in the farewell. I want to photograph. 
So he said, uh, go to the staff room and there's a person there, you can talk to him. You know, he handles the photographs for the schools. And if he likes your work, uh, show him your work and see what happens. And I think that was the time when I got to just do that. And uh, things worked out so well that I, I remember taking a portfolio of like wildlife pictures and food photographs and portraits and uh, close-ups and streets, et cetera, et cetera, to just show that I'm, I'm capable, like I want to do this. But he just saw like a few, he just, so a couple of pictures is like you know just get your camera from tomorrow to school whenever i ask you to and you're, you're good to go so uh, that was the turning point of my life where i was allowed to bring my camera to school whenever uh, you know i was given the permission to do so and uh, the kind of joy that came along was uh, very different because now it was uh, uh, very nice to know that i could uh, like you know in a, in a in a in a group full of people who are just uh, seated in the audience I can walk midway through and with my camera around my shoulder and uh, not having to worry about so many books in my bag. Uh, I was take, I was called for all almost all the events that, uh, you know, uh, the school had, be it sports, be it uh, uh, the annual fest and, you know, different things. Uh, I was officially the photographer and I also, I think, at, at the... In the second year, we started, like, making a team of photographers. So that was an interesting part. Uh, where like uh, because we had to divide the number of uh, uh, pictures that were supposed to be made for different events so I, I I told that there is this friend of mine who could do this and you know uh, we made a team of uh, juniors and seniors trying to do it together so then there was like there were like four to five people were doing the very same in my school and uh, I was very uh, I was driven like I was uh, uh, I I, that that felt like even today, like you know, despite having all the so-called achievements that you know the world looks up to, these that achievement of you know being called a school photographer was was way much more uh, you know uh, uh, making me feel uh, very legitimate about life. Like this is it, and and I think uh, having a page on uh, in a Facebook called Clicker Picture Photography. Uh, so now that page has died and I took it off because it felt a little uh, silly and, you know, I had to take it down by time, but uh, I've saved some pictures from the page, but it does not exist anymore, but uh, even that page was very fascinating in a way where I started making pictures for uh, a lot of friends hmm. uh, and, and just acquaintances and maybe not friends always, but it happened to be that at some point every other person wanted to have a picture made by me. Hmm. And uh, yeah. I used to have my logo, uh, you know, put up on one of on the side of the corners where they could not crop it out. So sure. that was my part. Like sure. I, knew, I knew people crop crop out sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I, I I used to very uh, uh, <laughs> funnily put it somewhere where they cannot, like maybe near their shoulders or somewhere. They, they can't crop out my name. I did not want my logo to be cropped off. That was my take on, you know having the uh, urge to say that this is an artist and the artist has to be respected. Mm. I think that sense of respect carries on for the longer run in life. Like you have to stand up for, you know, your work everywhere. And I think uh, I, uh, just knowing that so many people in the school at that point, like from my batch to the senior, few seniors and few juniors, and they had, uh, they had been photographed by me and I, I find complete pleasure in doing that without having any incentive as such, apart from the fact that it has to have my logo, my name has to be around, you know? And uh, uh, there came a time in my life where I was then asked to photograph a birthday party of a one year old. And that was the first time I think I made money in my life in the 11th grade as such. And uh, I, I remember going to the washroom as soon as I collected my money after the birthday party. And I, I, uh, I was, I just looked at that uh, couple of notes uh, that came to me fresh in hand and uh, maybe a tear popped out. Maybe I, you know, I felt very intimate with the money that I earned and I went to, uh, I went back home, I showed it to mine and they were happy. So I think at that point of time, uh, more than anything, they saw the confidence that I had and that is when support started coming in. Nice. Then they knew that I was, I was about this, like people will not simply call 11th grader to you know photograph their 
the baby's first birthday party you know yeah. and uh, yeah. then i got a few more events and so and so i think uh, life turned out to be uh, you know wonderful after knowing that uh, i i was not expecting that like i had no it, like i never put out any post saying that i want to you know make money or you know give yeah. me some assignments i'll do it i was yeah. just doing what i was doing it was a, like it was word to word, like mouth to mouth marketing as they say you know uh, the uh, the word of, yeah so i think uh, that happened and and then i think uh, the the research started and then i realized that i have to make this because now i'm doing this all, like uh, at some point i remember uh, yeah i have to do this all the time because uh, i remember one of our senior uh, Uh, the people in the school senior as in from the uh, from the staff yeah. so from uh, from yeah so from that uh, group of people there was one person who uh, stopped us uh, so there was i was going to photograph a football match from uh, you know uh, inter inter school competition yeah. and it was the final or the semi final and i was i was i was called as the photographer by the sports teacher mm. so i had the permission of the professor but this person had stopped the football team and me and asked us very point blank that you know do you think this will give you a bread and butter in life and i remember the football team got very angry and they had you know clenched fists and uh, uh, we, we couldn't uh, i think our eyes spoke so much more than what we wanted to say and in all in in all our minds we were saying yes we will you know at some point and uh, i think uh, all those instances only made me want to do this much more uh, Uh, thoroughly and you know i had to uh, i remember taking photographs of my professors which got published in the newspapers then so i think uh, it was always I, i had no doubts like i knew i was going to do this and uh, then the research started and i think i i figured out that you know mujhe uh, karna uh, hai and as uh, as funny as it sounded my uh, and as much as they supported me my family they tried to tell me me my friends told me that you know you try doing something as a backup like you know ki kuch aur kar lo do something that uh, might not uh, make you feel that you've not you, you know you've not made it uh, with your photograph so maybe you can drop down to this yeah. and continue with whatever you studied apart from yeah. photography yeah so i had only one thing to tell you yeah. yaar i have done this since my 8th or 9th grade now and knowingly and knowingly i have been into this and if if i stop this fire right now if you tell me to do something that will promise me a very safe secure future with a 9 to 11 job and now today back then i was the kind of person or maybe a couple of years ago i was the kind of person who used to look at the 9 to 11 job as a very boring it's a very it's a very cliche outlook towards people who work 9 to 11 but i feel that we all are in the same box we all are working 9 to 11 one way or the other yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe my work seems interesting yeah. from a cubicle point of view where i get to be around and you know i i get to visit different uh, events in the city but then the kind of work that comes along is probably 9 to 11 it's not in a box but i am on the streets i'm taking a laptop i'm trying to you know uh, file pictures and all of it comes down to 9 to 11 at the end of the day Correct. but uh, i think oh uh, yeah so uh, back then i think uh, they tried to tell me that kuch aur kar lo uh, so that you know you but i just knew that if i if if i do study which i will uh, and if i know how much it will start rewarding me in life then i will not have the urge to make the kind of pictures that i want to because then it will be uh, i know that i'm getting paid apart from photography yeah, it's a, it's a second option get, right it's always yeah so then it is it is going to be the camera which i will take you know to the vacations that i'll make in between and i'll go once in a week you know as a enthusiastic photographer trying to see i wanted this to be my identity that mm-hmm. was the point where i knew that if i choose to study something else and no, knowing that photog- i knew photography will pay me maybe not so much and i knew that it could probably pay me so much more Uh, but i did not want anything else to come in my way at that point of time like i knew if i do anything else i will like i will just drop down to doing that job very well because why not exceed in that part of life because i have uh, you know i have created a very stable future for me True. so i think that was the point when i uh, uh, 
I knew that I had to do a photography course. And then we looked out at colleges and uh, we figured out a few names. Uh, there was Light and Life Academy in Uti, uh, but which looked uh, like it was made for the people who are already professional enough to, you know, further about, uh, learn more about the craft. There was a biases, a school of photography, uh, which offered a very good package. So this is the uh, this is the story where I was coming down. So it offered a very good package where my parents will not feel uh, uh, disheartened at the fact that, you know, uh, it's a degree. So it's a degree course. The whole idea was that it is a very, it's a, it's a, it's everything. It's going to be photojournalism. It's going to be fashion. It's going to be uh, fine art, like, you know, uh, there'll be fine art photography. There'll be architecture, uh, all of it. You learn all of it. And it looked like a package deal. It looked like a deal which will give me a certificate, uh, yeah. a document which will say, you know, yeah. that he's got a degree at the end of the day. Mm. And more or less, I think now, as much as I know, uh, and as artists, uh, they themselves are aware that a paper will not talk about your art at any point. There is no office, there is no place which will really want to know how much and what you've studied as an as an artist. Your pictures will speak if, if they have to. Uh, so, uh, this this has to be spoken about, but I feel because otherwise I think it'll be half half a story. Yeah. So Symbiosis yeah. uh, was uh, a beautiful place. Uh, the campus, the the library that they offered, uh, uh, you know, just just the experience in general was a beautiful. I would not have been again to the person I met a teacher who has changed my life today because I joined that college. So I cannot take away that from Symbiosis at any point. And, uh, uh, but what it also did was it, it prioritized the commercial aspect of photography over uh, the fine arts and over photojournalism and documentary. So it was not looked into so much. It was not given the importance. So at the end, when, you know, you start uh, learning more in uh, in the course they start telling you that if you do not do fashion you'll not make the money that mm. was the equation that was mm. the mantra of uh, and it i knew so many photographers from my batch who wanted to do otherwise but had to you know fall back to the idea of doing fashion and for uh, for i i would i did not dislike fashion photography i still enjoy making portraits of people mm. but the um, I, if my liking was uh, underlooked, if my uh, calling was said to be the one which does not make money, it yeah. made me feel that, you know, this college, uh, yeah. this course does not uh, justify to what it tries to promise at the very start, because, you know, they cannot talk bad about the course when they're trying to get you in. Correct. And as soon as my teacher uh, of photojournalism and documentary and fine arts, uh, she happened to leave college. They did not uh, get a professor or any teacher as such who could do the very same for the same subject. Oh. It was just somebody else filling in the shoes, sitting and, you know, uh, it felt wrong. And there was a whole discussion amongst a lot of uh, batchmates mm. saying that this is wrong and, you know, we should either leave or we should talk about it. But nobody, uh, I think there was one person who left college and I think the second one or the third one was me. Yeah. Uh, at that very point, because yeah. I realized I was enjoying so much at campus, much more than studying. Mm -hmm. I started not going to classes in 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 the rebellious form of uh, uh, just me not wanting to accept that propaganda of you know uh, uh, you know prioritize the commercial aspect over my uh, over my uh, my calling. Yeah, and I think it's it's it, it, this is this is. This is why I think India in general does not have so many uh, artists who can actually do something more beyond the comer beyond the branding, beyond the advertisement part of life. As a as a creator, as a content creator, we're we are so much taken away by the bigger brands whom we'll have to work for. And and then it is no art, then it is basic equation. You have to please the client. Mm. And you cannot please yourself. If you do not please yourself, you're not, you are just an, you're just an artist who knows the functionality of a camera and you're going to do it in their way. And if it is their way, then where, what, what did you do this for? Like, why did you run so much for 
you know for nothing is what i felt and i think i left college i talked i talked to about i talked about this to ma on phone i was i was very uh, emotional i was crying and i don't know i can't do this anymore i i have and she did not understand and later pro- probably after a month or two she realized that uh, you know maybe i need to speak with her she came down to india and uh, we spoke about it and uh, she knew that uh, she saw me she saw me just by the appearance of uh, uh, how I, i how i had become i did not look well i looked very lost i looked very confused i looked uh, shattered uh, yes i was enjoying on life but i think uh, that was not what college meant for me like i knew i this was my peak time i wanted to study mm-hmm. and uh, i think that is the time when i joined udan and uh, we looked at the college and i think uh, we i got my i got myself enrolled in that very first time when we went to the, uh, you know to the college and uh, yeah i think that that is where i uh, i got more mentors who could really shape uh, shape me very well uh, in life and uh, further teach me so much more uh, apart from pictures what i learned so much from adan was uh, honesty discipline and you know time punctuality and uh, these things which did not easily come from the prior, the college before that this college made me you know work on my deadlines this college made me run around this college okay, gave me a punishment. lot more professional in that sense right? it, it was it, it it was meant to create so to photographers who will work on the field Got it. who will do, dominate the ground of mumbai Uh, with the pictures that they bring in, with the content that they bring in, True. so uh, there was so much of exercise just by the fact, like you know, uh, the very exercise of uh, you know our assignments got doubled up if we came late. If we made it late to class, we had to climb. So if we were late to class, we had to go back down, climb five stairs, and you know go back up. There were lots of things which taught us how to run for a picture, how to uh, you know uh, be very honest and not stage pictures, mm. which. Uh, which later also helped us know uh, helped us to figure out that you know uh, uh, you can easily set up something to make it look beautiful and you know sure. create that sure. but as a as a photojournalist you do not set up pictures you do not ask a person to move you do not change the setting at all you shoot it the way you see it and yeah there uh, i think from adan i think uh, uh, i got my basic training and and then the internship and so on that's you know janak there's i can listen to you the whole day you know janak because all <laughs> i think and you know often we and i i'm just curious about your idea of discipline as well right because now in udan what i notice is that you were more uh, open to accepting the notion of discipline there because they were disciplining yeah. you for a purpose because in a professional yeah. case, if you do come late it yeah. looks uh, unprofessional yeah. right but in in a more formal setting yes, when they tell yes. you to submit an assignment it's a lot more frustrating yeah. and because you don't understand the purpose yeah. of why they're disciplining you in the first place right but you know also like that's something we both have in common you know i also dropped out and i took a year off and i think it's yeah. so hard to make that decision you know to do yeah. that transition yeah. and everyone you know is you know yeah. going through yeah. that also means you know shifting yourself from this notion of meeting society's ideal and understanding what your journey is and being honest to yourself so you know kudos to you for actually making that decision at that point of time but also kudos to your parents you know because i yeah, think as parents very much. they yeah they, yeah i mean they are scared and it's just fascinating to see how they can still be supportive even though they're scared because they probably seen you as a child and they know that you know your well being is more important than society's acceptance and i think that was their thinking your mom and your dad's yes. thinking and i i know i i remember in your personal account seeing a photo i think your first photo is of you holding yes. a little award with your mom and dad yes. right so yes. i think you know i know you have a lot of respect for them as well so i think we underestimate the role of our parents but if you have supportive parents that love you you know there's nothing okay. better in terms of career support but you know janak i feel like i want to jump into your photos so what i'm going to do now right. is janak and me had a conversation about his work and uh, he shared a couple of photos with me i i mean just to put it out there i think janak has over thousands and thousands i, I don't know is there a number about how many photos you've clicked until now janak 
thousand is a small it's a small count i think yeah. i may yeah it it's beyond it's beyond again, the count. Again, it's numbers i mean numbers don't matter numbers but but i think every every photo that janak shared with me has a story so i think before we go ahead and hear janak's thoughts uh, on these photos let me just take you through um a couple of these photos so let's go here and janak just let me know if you can see my screen all right yeah i can yeah you can perfect so here is one photo yes, yes. janak took and again i, I you know I'll, what i'll do is i'll run through all the photos janak and then we can come back to the double right. and then have a discussion yes yes fine, fine so yes. here is one and again i don't want to talk too much about the photo because i feel photos speak for themselves and this is another one that janak took now you really really like this photo because i think it it requires a lot of skill to be able to catch that moment and uh, here is a look alike of a prominent figure which is again a fascinating figure and I, i'm so interested in how you're able to catch <laughs> this with almost like i don't even know if you're there and what these people are thinking yes. it's almost like yeah. it's hard and here is when you caught a fight in a local mumbai station yes and yeah. this is something i also wanted to talk to you about janak you know the the role of mumbai right. in your development as an artist such a beautiful city uh this yes. was one of your early early photos i think it's the fifth or yes. sixth photo but yes, yes. about an, an older woman watching tv i think it was watching a cartoon <laughs> yes yes the description yes. and i think this is your third photo in your work account and it was yes. uh, the railway um it was a railway public toilet and they were on a strike and not a strike i think they were celebrating holi so nobody was allowed yeah. to use the toilet yes, yes. <laughs> and this is again so beautiful because when i saw this photo i'm thinking about the emotions you capture in the person's face right so yes like uh here is another one i think it's a famous hotel and there's a person dancing and you know enjoying the night but Yeah. one thing you know i can only show you a little bit of janak's work what i would recommend you do is you follow janak on instagram and his work accounts i will be linking everything in the show notes but also what i want this show to become uh, is a way for other people to know janak's work and and if you are interested in any sort of professional work not only in mumbai but if you want to write an article and you need photos for it uh, janak is available uh as a professional to help you with it i will also link an article about um that janak where janak was doing a collaboration with a german magazine and they were reporting about water usage and consumption in the city of mumbai and it was done really professionally so all of janak's work will be linked in the show notes but the reason i showed you these photos was because when i reviewed i actually spent about 3 to 4 hours looking at your work and reading you know your description in every photo janak you know because i feel like that is also a a skill in terms of telling a story behind the photo and when i looked at the definition of a photo journalist it's someone yeah. who communicates news uh, by right. photos but yeah in your photos i see emotions i see okay. color i see context i see yeah. um i see good writing and right. I see I see somebody that is very conscious about um being respectful of the moment but also capturing and documenting the moment. So, you know, Janak in your photo because I know right after Udan you also interned for Indian Express which was a very, you know, uh, big like opportunity and it's not easy to get yes, that internship. Yes. I think it's one of the biggest papers in a country like India which is has over a billion people. So and I did see the photos you published for that magazine too. But how did you you know through school through work develop this ability to catch emotions to catch color uh to catch stories and you know in to to rephrase my question better is how do you think a photojournalist or a photographer learns to see and capture what is essential and right. that makes you different so how do you think that happened for you and maybe you can tell us a few stories about photos that really changed you individually right i think uh, 
uh, as a photojournalist, you're trained to uh, be like so. The, so I remember one one brief statement my sir told us about. You know, you keep that in mind, and you're uh, you figure out what's your job as a photographer. So he says that you you've got to be a fly on the wall when you're trying to document these stories. <clears throat> so you have have to be visible, but you have to be very quick to move around. You have to look like you exist, but you don't. You have to be very unseen in these moment, moments. Otherwise, it's otherwise you break the whole uh, uh, you know connection with the the viewer who looks at your picture. Sure. So, a uh, second thing I think uh, what I would rather say helped us is visiting a lot of uh, different places in a very short period of time. Let's say like the contrast that develops from the different environments that keep changing as a photojournalist. Mm -hmm. So I could be getting a assignment call uh, at the Taj Hotel, let's say 11 o'clock in the morning. I have to attend a conference of the business type, you know, tycoons and um, I have to photograph their party later on and I have to photograph their meeting and I have to photograph the prominent politicians who come around. And then suddenly you're sent to photograph a fire in a chawl mm -hmm. and you rush to, you know, seeing that later in the afternoon, you know, you have to take, so you have to, you have to leave Taj Hotel when the call comes. You, you made your pictures, you have to, you know, file them and then you're on the, your way to see a fire and you have to see people struggle to make their way out. You have to see if there is casualties, you have to know that happening. So you're suddenly, you're, the environment keeps changing so rapidly. So from a very, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> the extremes that this profession brings along, you get to not just see, you're not there to just photograph, but you also start feeling, you also start looking at these people in different light, in different times. You look at the chawl when it is on fire, but you also look at it when it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, celebrating holy. Or when you see a small room having 20, 30 small children, you know, being taught by one tuition teacher. Mm. You look at the friendships that exist in Chol, you look at the parties that exist in Taj. So I think uh, uh, this mix that keeps happening. Mm. Uh, suddenly you're into a zoo in Baikla. Suddenly you, you know, you have to go to photograph uh, something as silly as the CCTV cameras that are around the city. Mm. Then th there was an assignment which, which was nothing but just photographing the CCTV cameras in Bombay. That was my brief. I had okay. to like, for Indian Express, I had to look around for CCTV cameras in the city for three hours and come back to office. Uh, this was perhaps the most boring assignment uh, to say, uh, you know, uh, if anybody would be uh, doing something like that. But I took it with full pride and I was out, uh, you know, in daylight photographing, finding different CCTV cameras at different locations. and. And I think the print that comes out to be in the next day was nothing but like as small as a small, very square, small, short, malab, this is this is what it was at the end of the day. Got it. But you do that, I got the byline. We work for the byline. We work for, you know, at the end, the picture says it's a photograph by Jana Krata. Hmm. So um, apart from that, uh, when you start looking at these stories uh, over time, again and again, uh, when you see, uh, uh, Mumbai being flooded every monsoon, you know, mm. until your knees, you're, you know, people working, working their way out of that water, but they have to, they, they have no way out. Like you have to get into that water to catch a particular train. You have to, there is no other, your, your scooter gets stuck, your car gets stuck. You have to uh, protect yourself, your documents. And I, you see so much of, so much, so there's like, the city becomes a complex creature. We, mm -hmm. You have to understand it by time. The uh, you you see you see little children you know consuming tobacco like very little children uh, in far off regions. I think I made a picture of yep. that as well in my early days. Yep. And uh, uh, it, it you know you read about it, you watch films about it, and it does not shock you as much. But when you see it in person, very close to your eye, it changes a little bit of a person in you. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see. Uh, when you see, uh, how do I tell you? Um, like so I you, think you, you see the pain and the suffering, but you also see the happiness and the joy. Right? And everything, everything. It's like 
it's like a mix it's like a mixture it's uh, you know there's no point at which you feel just one thing throughout the day these right. assignments that keep coming throughout maybe probably 3 to 4 it will take you through four different kind of environments four different kind of people you know and you come back to sleep and you have a, a, you, you you retake everything that happened in your day and you have a very a different version of the city all together again it changes by the morning again it changes the very next day so uh, i think i think the the, the more you see uh, uh express you, as you said you know how how do i follow up emotions and how do i look at color after a point it's it's just it's just you, you know what you find interesting in a particular given scenario yeah people are everywhere so what uh, so what was told to us in uh, in classes was if you see a bunch of photographers aiming their lenses at one particular moment, do not go for that. It's done. So try to look for something from a different angle. Try to try to seek for something that is not that is not given the kind of attention. Got it. That it, 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 it. So there is always a bunch of photographers piled up to see something that's happening. Always in any given scenario. You know. But you have to break if you want to make your picture stand. If you want your picture to be different, you have to not go where the crowd of photographers are. You have to be away from them. That is when you see something uh, new. Otherwise, what, ha what happens to be is most of the pictures that come out, uh, you know, regarding the reportage of news, there's always a very common subject. There's always a very common action that is photographed by four to five people in four to five, in, in a different angle, more or so. But it's, there's a repetition of visuals that come to you through these uh, photographs. So if you want to break that, if you want to have your own identity in these pictures, you have to search for something that people are not, you know, uh, want, uh, are not looking at. So that sure. is, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and, and that's, that's, you know, just, that's so fascinating, Janak, you know, because um, like looking at something is, is something that we take for granted, right? Looking at, and, you know, I, I know you're really passionate about documenting and, uh, yeah. but also I, when I hear you, I know that you have a clear vision as an artist in terms of the purpose of, you know, uh, photography to, to communicate the, your, your vision of what it means to be an artist, but you're also a photojournalist. You know, I, I know that you have a vision as an artist in terms of what your photos should be. So how do you grapple both these sort of spaces, you know, being a photojournalist, being an artist and, you know, finding that balance between these two worlds. So I think I've, uh, at least this lockdown has helped me uh, look into myself uh, more than uh, I, more than I could ever do in the given time that was always hectic. And, you know, uh, now I have the time to think about it. But even back then, uh, what was uh, uh, given as an idea or rather, um, you know, uh, a, a thing to follow was to always have the camera by your shoulder. Like uh, if that is done, you do not, there are lots of things you see and you wish you had a camera and you, you, you do not wish that if you always have it by you, next to you. So uh, mostly I do have a camera by my shoulder. Mm. Uh, I keep my, I do not keep the lens cap uh, shut. Like I do not shut the lens with the cap. I feel that blocks me a lot more. So I keep it open because if I see, I photograph. You capture. Uh, but, yeah, but over time, I think I realized that uh, I I could not stop making pictures on my way back to home after doing the assignments. I had mm -hmm. to see more. My uh, my uh, Even if I do not have a camera, as I told you, sometimes I do not, uh, I, I cannot capture it. So I have to write about it because what I see it matters to me in in some some way or the other. It, maybe that part of life that I wrote about does not get. It has no meaning. It has nothing to do with you know uh, it being a part of an article. But uh, I write a little note about it, uh, and I I think you have to keep the, the balance. The balance is very important. Mm. Uh, uh, I remember my sister asking me in between uh, at some point of my life when I was just all about assignments and you know just uh, go, running behind the big picture you know the the picture that makes it to the newspaper the picture that makes it to the front page she asked me uh, you know uh, why do you why do you not take pictures of flowers anymore 
why do you not take pictures of sunsets anymore mm. you know the pictures that you used to when you were in school the pictures that you wanted to yeah. uh, and it 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 pushed me back so much more it made me look at life suddenly in a very different light where i stopped taking the pictures that actually you know gave me happiness mm. the urge to make more at some point of my life was just cancelled out because i know that a picture of flower will not be published true i know that a picture of sunset is not going to give me a story Got so uh, when uh, when she told me that and i realized a little bit more about life i started uh, not taking my camera also i started looking at sunsets more to know what i missed out on i uh, i i started reading more poems uh writing a bit more than i used to so my captions so as you said that i write uh, about my pictures well so these are very really informative pieces on what is happening it's more or less to do with what is exactly happening in the picture got it but then i realized that okay. back then when i was putting out pictures on my page or you know uh, as, uh, before before everything got very professional i used to write like silly poems that i make up just to represent the idea of what the picture could be yeah so uh, i think uh, it's a gray area now because i feel that uh, these these titles they they and like they make you want to behave in a certain way mm. you uh, so so when they say a, pro, a a photojournalist now you're supposed to make news related pictures or story related pictures if you're a fashion photographer you are just making pictures of models and you know uh, uh, beauty as such and i think it stops you from looking uh, openly uh, it it stops you from taking everything in at once i feel titles everywhere has stopped a uh, artist from becoming what they really are sure. uh, when you when you categorize artists in different segments you stop them from reaching their maximum potential at the end of true today i remember seeing uh, uh, one of the people my look you know look up to uh, Uh, so she used to make photographs that i could not understand back then and i so you know and and the only thing she told me back then about uh, me stating that out was uh, you know you you you'll figure out some day mm-hmm. you'll know about it some day and i think that day has come like you know over the time when i make some pictures that have no sense at all they have no meaning they can mean nothing at for somebody but they can mean everything to me uh uh and and uh, you, you know when they say that uh, i think i can only talk about a photographer if i would talk about any other profession it would not do you know uh, justice. justice to what they feel but i i think as a photographer you 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 need to know that this is a camera this is a magical uh, tool it's a it's a lovely in- invention that has been made you have to be thankful that this thing exists where yeah. you can uh record time yeah. and you know just keep a moment to yourself uh and so it's almost I like have, a super uh, power right janak i mean like if you think about like 400 years like i'm i'm just thinking like 400 years sorry sorry yeah, yeah. no no it's fine it's fine go ahead no, no, please, please. i mean when you talk i always feel like there's so many thoughts but like i i think about life yeah. like 200 years ago when yeah. all we could do as humans was actually yeah. paint instances and then yeah. suddenly the camera comes and we can yeah. actually capture it i mean it changes history right yeah. it changes yeah. politics it changes economics because we can capture moments that we weren't there so yeah. it's almost like a right. superpower but but so they say about pictures right so it it is it is it has it is a universal language this cap this pictures that are formed at any point in the given world a person would understand a picture easily than words can do you know uh, uh, uh you can suddenly feel you can suddenly know what it is about yeah. but apart from that the idea is that uh, this so called digital space of ours i feel uh, you know to speak about it uh, yes your work can get viral yes your work can end up uh, you know reaching another part of the world where you know people look at it again and uh, see what you've made across the years but i feel uh, what it has stopped uh, precisely uh, from doing is that we we as humans uh, i think we we are in such a hurry of putting up things for this platform for the internet uh when at once upon a time where you know we all have photograph 
uh, albums, you know, these albums, uh, family albums that we have at home. And uh, when we sit, when we sit down and look into it, it's always a, it's always a event. It's always a carnival, even if you're by yourself going through what your, you know, our parents have shot or what uh, family parties used to look like, what uh, picnics used to look like. Those pictures were not made for the Instagram. Yeah. Those pictures were not made yeah. for, uh, uh, for, for, you know, your friends to see very instantly the minute you reach a particular location. Yeah. I think this rush that has come along with the internet is as beautiful, but it has uh, problematic too, because you've forgotten to enjoy pictures and the idea of coming together to see what, what existed mm. a few days ago. Uh, I think now that I think about it, like, no, no, uh, no disrespect to the platforms that exist and let us, you know, work for what we are working. Uh, give us more, they give us, definitely they give us more opportunities when, you know, your work is seen around. But back then there was a time when lots of photographers used to knock offices. We have forgotten the art to knock the doors of so many offices. Mm. We are, you know, there's a lot of email work that happens. You, you do not have to worry if you're not entertained at the office, you can just email. But back then, I remember like uh, the seniors talking about how they had to constantly approach the office again and again, as long as their work was looked into. Mm. So the struggle to push yourself harder, the the beauty that came along with, you know, a set of uh, five to 10 friends having a very good party, uh, being photographed on film camera, and then it takes you a week to develop those images. Mm. And now every friend, wants to know what the party looked like and mm -hmm. only those friends pull in some money maybe and then they get that role developed and then there comes a day where they sit together and then they again enjoy and then again it's a party of its own yeah that, that yeah. those pictures yeah. are not meant for like everybody around the world the people who can come home and if they are close enough they get to see True. so this is what i feel it differentiates uh we can always you know uh, be cliche about how old school was always better but i think it was always much more pure at what it was sure. you know right now uh, everything becoming ki ha you know i did i did this today it has to be shown today I, you know your food uh, your food pictures are out you know i think that i mean uh, i do it i'm not any uh, alien to these concepts i do the very same i am a part of the same uh, you know hypocrisy yeah. but i feel it's uh, <clears throat> the more we understand of what uh, you know slowing down the process could mean so that's why i think i really like enjoy i i love to see your account and the pictures that you put up and your site so i i went i went through your pictures too and suddenly time slows down when you do not when everything is not about making it picturistic when everything is not about making it about the best looking uh, uh, visual for you know for everybody i think that is when you love the pictures even more i think that is what existed in our albums we did not not every picture was everybody posing perfect people are a little shy little coy people were probably very very uptight uh, there was a little rawness that came along in those pictures because those pictures were just meant for yourself and nobody else so i think uh, <clears throat> now i think we we uh, view yeah so i think the, this is this is a little uh, space that i'm stuck into right now where i think that you know we're with half of our lives out there on the internet for people to see uh, and and it's also we, we stop enjoying so much yeah yeah Jonathan, that's a very good point here because it's also a reflection of the times you grew up in right you grew up in the social media age but you know, like when I was hearing you, like there were two, like I recently saw a TED talk where they said that rather than capturing the moment, try to enjoy it, you know, and I remember I was in a, I was in some event or maybe it was a, a get together and rather than experiencing the moment, I had this tendency to go into my pocket and like capture it and record it before even experiencing it, you know, and, and yeah. I feel like that comes back to what you were saying about, you know, you, you, because you captured the photo, somebody else can relive that moment again, experience yeah. the same emotions again, experience that context again. But yeah. even I remember a conversation with my mother, you know, and I asked her if there was, you know, just a random conversation with family members. I asked yeah. her if there was a fire in the house, what would you take first? 
and then she told me that she would actually take the albums with all our childhood photos and not our yeah. passport or right. other documents yeah. because all of that can be recreated right, right? right. the photos can't be so recreated yes yeah the photos cannot be recreated yeah that makes sense yeah and like and that that is something that i wanted to you know like think about but janak i like you told me there was a point maybe this can be the last question because i want to be respectful of your time too but in terms of seeing you know you said there was a point where you moved away in addition to your camera you started writing you know looking at poems so were there any because as an artist you're also consuming other art right so were there any books films yeah. people uh songs uh photographers that if you could recommend one or three for somebody that you know is listening to this show and they're like an aspiring sort of artist or photojournalist or photographer what were three books I think, films that really influenced I you i think i, I um uh, so i think recommendations are very uh, how do i say it? so it for me it's a very like i've never been a person uh, as much i've taken yes i've taken recommendations and you know followed them up but what works for me might not work for somebody else is what i look at matlab is i could probably name a few movies in the top of my mind right now so there is a uh, city of god i think which uh, is about a photojournalist and uh, coming out from the streets and how he sees things happening and um, of course there is uh, so there is this very cliche uh, out take on how the recommended movies uh, you know make who you are but 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 yeah, it's not it's, necessarily yeah, but it's sometimes a very very silly movie could inspire you in different ways so i think even about songs or books uh, i have uh how do i say this so, and that that's okay john like you know you, you know you, you don't really no, i think i think no, like, like john you don't yeah. really have to answer like what i wanted to do is yeah. even if because i feel like like that is a very subjective thing right cup building yeah. of what you're saying and like yeah. Yeah. maybe maybe like another question would be if there was a like uh like a like a story related to one or two photos you know because i i wanted like if you had to look back on all your work right um, was there like before the photo was taken and after the photo was taken was there one thing that you felt uh was really um important for you your growth as as a professional right. maybe like one right. or two anecdotes about those photos like the stories behind photos in that sense right. um so i think uh, because I, i i know you told me about the tobacco uh, you know the child yeah, but then maybe you can it. you can tell us about how you constructed the piece with the german publication you know because i thought okay. the photos in that were magnificent in terms of how you so, captured the women you know collecting water you captured the people that were working on the cause at the end of the article but you also had a little video at the start right so yeah. how did yeah. you construct that piece jana so it was a, it was a, a well planned 3 uh, to 4 day uh, of a you know uh, uh, it, it was it was basically me and a journalist and a translator meeting the communities who were facing these issues and uh, we had to go again and again and i think the the photographing part and uh, filming part was a little bit of the so much that happened and i think uh, this was the first time i think uh, where i was attached to a, uh, a project which was uh, longer than the given duration a newspaper would put me into mm-hmm. to do the very same so um, uh, you know one thing is to see and know that these problems exist and then to, the second is to Uh, go a little bit more closer and to listen to them uh, thoroughly of what what happens you know in in the very insides of the city where water it does not reach to these communities in the way it should be because everybody you know has the right to have good drinking water and uh, you you understand that uh, it, it is out of matlab you cannot probably process of how much a woman or a small child or a man goes through to start their day with the idea of carrying so much of uh, uh you know buckets of water they have to carry buckets and buckets of water to just make sure that the uh, the day has a little bit of water to run through and then they go just to, just to give the, the listeners some background like 
what yeah. was the piece about was it about water usage or it was no it was about the water uh, the distribution so the 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 the, the difference in how uh, one part of the city has excess amount of water and you know they they happen to just use it as as they like and then there is a part of the city where they are uh, they have water to be taken far off from you know places where they have one taps or two and they have to stand in queues sometimes they have to sometimes filter the water that they take sometimes uh, uh, the conditions are not so well where they stay and they have to make sure that their water does not get contaminated they have uh, transport issues you know transportation is a pro- so a lot of uh, and and the chil- so what i saw there the, the children there are very enthusiastic about life they 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 are working uh, beyond the idea of water you know a normal teenager being brought up in a per- perfectly safe environment would do today they they studying they take up a they take up a job or probably one more job to you know get out of that very environment that they ha- they have been put into uh, their struggle is to make sure that the water comes to that place and then they get out of it as soon as they can because uh, uh, of course they are uh, having the worries of life but they do not show it on their face they put it up with a smile and they live life uh, they talk about carrying water on their shoulders in the morning as early as 4:35 or 5:36 and then doing their job and then their education as normal as it could sound for them it was uh, probably you know a uh, uh, it worried me to a point where so i think this is where uh, the, the the line falls uh, you know when you uh, when you see these 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 people these stories and you come closer to them and now uh, you know that you might not be able to meet them again sometime you know after the after after the project gets done maybe you're busy with something else but uh, 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 we did we did the project with a uh, complete intention that it goes uh to the to the you know it reaches the people that it should reach and you know it helps them in one way or the other but uh, i think uh, more, more than anything these pictures are made so that change happens uh, these pictures are made so that history books have a little bit of an idea of what the earlier time used to look like uh i think more uh, more or less the pictures are made as a photojournalist to know that change is a very uh, you know it's is is the is a constant yeah. you know yeah. uh, change keeps happening and uh, uh, today there are taxis on road you know uh, driving uh, driving by normally as they look like but ek time pe ghoda gaadi thi so so to just know the very idea that there was uh, horse carts and bullock carts in the city of bombay as the mode of transport and now that you don't see that so frequently they look beautiful in pictures as archives <laughs> so today if i i can make hundreds and hundreds of pictures of cars in the road and they can look very normal to us because it's it's the given time today tomorrow there are flying cars and uh, these pictures look like uh, very beautiful archives of how, what you know cars on the road look now flying cars is a concept that can you know we can laugh about it today but tomorrow maybe 40 50 100 years down the line when that becomes a very new normal and uh, uh, this idea of bombay would never be possible again because uh, you know who knows what happens so i think uh, the idea is to keep even the sense so for me when i look at pictures uh, the more uh, uh, the more i look into it is that whatever you photograph whoever photographs uh, anything it it will so much speak about the time that you're in it could be it could be the kind of clothes that we wear today it could be the kind of houses that we have today it could be the kind of uh, uh buildings that are you know existing now you know slowly the idea of buildings is what i you know when you look into it buildings are becoming these long vertical you know uh, skyscrapers and uh, every every uh, big flat looks like the same but these bungalows and these nice villas are getting uh, demolished day by day these properties are taken you know taken by the larger uh, builders to make more apartments and more uh, same looking like structures so tomorrow when 
the city starts looking differently. These pictures, so as you said that, you know, uh, people think that it is the bigger cameras or the more professional equipment which makes pictures. I believe that every person today with a normal camera whatsoever that they have in hand, uh, everybody is a photographer. There is no, you do not require somebody to validate uh, you as a person who likes to, I would be so much more interested in who, what does that one person who comes to Bombay for the first time photographs on his phone and goes back. It could be his family pictures. It could be what he is filming around when he's at the beach, because that is so much raw, is, is way more raw than what you are doing as an artist. You have the idea of the aesthetic. You have the idea of what a lens could do. That person is limited to what that small camera offers. Correct. Which is way more real than your approach could be. So I think uh, uh, if uh, to idolize bigger cameras or uh, more expensive equipment does not make sense after a point of time because uh, as long as you know what you want to photograph and what you want to save more uh, more or less, because knowingly and knowingly you you start to press that button when you know you it's you you could tell that no to many of us you know I took it for the sake of it but you do it with a conscious mind. You know why you are doing it, and when you do it, it matters to you down the line. So there are lots of pictures that uh, uh, that I think would not make sense to me, uh, and I keep them, uh, you know, not in the selected folder. But today, when I look back into it, into the so many more pictures that I did not look into, just because they were not the pictures which would make it to print, or you know, uh, with the idea of this will not be taken by any publication, right. or it will it will not make it to uh, the particular article. Uh, these pictures are way more beautiful, way more uh, insightful than the pictures which uh, are the so-called uh, the breaking news pictures or the pictures that you know uh, are looked by professionals. So I think there is no such definition. Definition when comes to art, uh, it, it, it shatters. It shatters. It's it, it, yeah, it, it, it completely. Yeah, it's restricted. Yeah. For me, fashion is on the streets. For me, fashion is on the ramp as well. For me. Uh, uh, there is, I mean, I think everybody goes through this phase. I mean, it's it's very natural for one to understand that after a point of time, there is no there is no brackets, there are no segments. You are everything that you see. You are everything that you show from from your little uh, you you find that you have in your camera. That's yeah, and that that's such a beautiful note to possibly, you know, end end the show, Janak. You know, I can honestly like I I want to talk to you about so many other things like like Mumbai, like, you know, all your experiences. I think I can talk to you about, about this for hours and hours. And I still feel I want to know more about your stories. But I think you are, even though you've just begun your career in a lot of ways, you know, maybe if I interview you five years down the line, 10 years down the line, I think this will be a very different interview because you will have a whole bunch of experiences. And I hope that in a way, this conversation is like a visual photograph or videograph of, you know, who Janak is today, but also who Janak is becoming over time, you know, so I hope I get the chance to, you know, interview you five years from now when you're obviously, and I, I know you, you'll do, you'll do really well, Janak, but, you, but I, I think I wanted to thank you firstly for so passionately um, capturing, you know, these experiences and moments and not just on you know, my behalf, but on the behalf of the people whose stories you have captured, right? So thank you for all your work in that regard. But uh, what I also want to do is don't stop uh, this conversation by just hearing this video. Uh, please go into Janak's work account. Uh, I will link the article uh, with the German publication and, uh, and a lot of other articles by Janak. If you are interested in any particular assignment, uh, do reach out to Janak. But if you just want to enjoy his photos, I think that is a great place to start. And just looking at that is also like uh, a great place to experience Janak's work. And so Janak, thank you for your time. Um, we really, really enjoyed this interview. And uh, yeah, and uh, to, that is the end of this episode of Learning Stories. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes from this show.